Yes, it is to answer your question. Good evening, everyone. Well, it's a pleasant evening in Batumi out here, Batumi, Georgia. And uh, if you're somewhere in the US or Canada, well, I don't know what time of day it is. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yes, this, this is another, this is gonna be another Joa slash Akaboshin Tetsu review. Actually, not even one review, but it's gonna be a, a review of two games. But that's gonna come a little later, because uh, we're not, as always, we're not gonna start with that. It's a little early for that. Hey, oh, Anton, was it? Was your name always Anton Prescorian on this on Twitch? Didn't I? It just, just seemed to me that it was like something different. Prescorian is before, right? Have you changed it? So what's happening, everyone? How's it going? Is it time for to play some Go? And uh, that's an imposter. You changed it. Yay, Gooplet, what's going on? <laughs> you ready to play some game? I got a 30, I got a 30 minute calls coming up, so I might not be present for all of it, but I'm very excited about more classical games on Witch and in the English speaking Go world in general. Yay, yeah, sure, sure, sure. We're gonna upload it to YouTube, so even if you can't make it right now, we're gonna, it's gonna be available later with highlights and all kind of stuff. So, Gooplet, another Joe with stream. Yes, another, another Joe with stream. Even though Joe is not going to be the main character today, but we're still going to be talk, talking about him, and yeah, 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 we'll get to that. Uh, I'm ready to play, says Alexan, but yeah, uh, I was kind of, I kind of promised Gooplet to play last time, because last time I ignored her, and she said, ah, yeah, yeah, you're ignoring me, and then no, we, we can't play a game, so let, let's, okay, we're going we're gonna to play a game right now. Shall we, shall we? Um, I don't think we have enough time for an actual 19 by 19 kind of game, so we're gonna play um, 13 by 13. What do you th What do you think? 13. It's gonna be a what's a, what was it called yet, uh, last night on your stream? Like uh, a blitz team? <laughs> bullet 13 by 30. What, what what is a bullet? Is like extremely fast? Oh come on! You know that people on stream are like heavily handicapped, right? <laughs> they're like severely brain damaged when they're when they're on stream and they just can't think and they just they have to talk and they have to smile and they have to drink some tea and they just have to <laughs> freezing. Two seconds per move. Oh come on, two seconds per move. I mean, I, I'm not sure I could play two seconds per move like ever, <laughs> not even on like live on stream on Twitch, but. I mean, two seconds? I think I've tried like five seconds many years ago when I was young and full of ambition, but that, would, that, that didn't really, really work, as you, can, as you can tell. Getting my gamer mouse back. <laughs> okay. Should I get my gamepad or something? It's gonna be a lot, a lot, of, a lot of clicking here. It's gonna be a lot of button banging. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make it at least, I don't know, um, what is like the fastest, um, the, okay, what is the slowest fast time setting you'd be okay with? Slow motion. <laughs> it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be super fast but in slow motion, okay? Um, so what is your, um, what is your OGS three seconds <laughs> All right, it's going to be like a, a little marketplace negotiation here, like bargaining here. Three seconds per move. No, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say like uh, how about one and a half minutes <laughs> per move. <laughs> Let's bring it down. Oh, good play. Okay, that's easy. All right, let me find you first. Mike, can I can I uh, can I open another OGS window like next to that one in the same browser? Okay, good. I'm going to do just that. Hopefully. Why is it not opening? It should be opening. Open in a new tab. Hmm. Open link. Okay. Now we're searching for a gooplet. Gooplet's still negotiating. You pick the time control, I don't actually care. 
Okay, I'm I'm gonna pick something. I'm gonna pick something something nice. Uh, challenge thirteen by thirteen, no handicap. Um, all right, let's go. No main time. Okay, main time is boring. At right, none. And uh, <laughs> hey, and let's say I don't know twenty seconds per move. Is that going to be entirely crazy? 20 seconds per move. Can I can I make it? Ah. I'm 12 done and dying gote. Well, I must I must warn you. I'm I'm probably 15 done at like uh, making stupid brrr, incredibly stupid mistakes on the live stream. So, uh, all right, let's go with 20 seconds and then see. If it's going to be incredibly slow and and, and we're going to be bored, the next time we're going to play a, a a faster a faster game, okay? I'm, 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 I'm like 20 seconds. <sighs> wow, what is there to think about? Join the Go Magic community. Yeah, okay. All right, I think we're done. Five periods and sand challenge. Oh, it's a ranked game. Whoa. What does it even mean? Ranked 13 by 13? And yeah, sand challenge. Yay! Okay. All right. Go to OBS. And so it begins. Oh, I'm black. What? Why do I have five minutes? Why am I five Q? What is happening here? What is happening on this? I was. I said it. I said it to none. Like no, no. Ah. Yeah, okay. And have fun, yes. Have fun. Oh, okay. Five minutes to make the first. <laughs> okay, now I have Biomi. Okay, good. Five, three. My favorite move. Oh, it's gonna count? No. It's getting on my nerves already. <laughs> Even with 20 seconds. Okay, let's see what kind of Joseki you will offer me. Uh, oh, come on. This machine preferred Joseki. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my points. I'm going to take my points and I'm gonna, just going to be, I'm going to pretend that I'm okay with taking territory, even though I'm, I'm a very much influence kind of guy. Okay, okay. This voice, huh? Yeah, the machine might not prefer anything on anything. We don't even know. That's a nice little moyo out there. I'm kind of happy that it, this is not uh, a 19 by 19. Otherwise, I would have to invade right now. But now I don't have to invade because uh, it's a small board. What? Is that an invasion? Alright, I'm just going to have to block this. Cause this is like this is right from my from my, from one of my courses. This is this move. Hmm. Okay. And I'm gonna. Should I kick? Let's kick. Let's kick it. And hmm. Let's do this. Trying to get out. Yeah, I'm kind of trying to explain what I'm doing to all the people watching out there and at the same time think. Ah, oh, I knew it! I knew this was coming. Yeah, but my plan is now to separate, so I can't let you connect. I can't let you connect. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna... Let's do this. Which looks like an ugliest shape in the world. But I like it. So hopefully, Gooblet's gonna live in that corner right now. Just, 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 just take that corner. Take it. Just take it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some, some, some magic, attacking. Uh, oh come on. Now I will can uh, connect. Wait. Can I connect? Yeah. 
I'll connect. Mm -hmm. And I will... Block, I guess. Go is hard. No, I should say like question mark, Lamau. <laughs> question mark. All right, I'm just going to block and uh, assume that white is going to live in that corner. White's going to live in that corner. Hmm, is white going to live in that corner? Question mark. Is white living in that corner? Let's attack everything. There's an innocent, vulnerable looking white group on top of the board. Show me your eyes. Mm. And attack. Cover, 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 cover. Seal it in, seal it in. Uh, oh, what? Mm. Come on. All right, all right, cut. And can I, can I? Can I? Can I take it? Is this a ladder? Is this a ladder? I'm trying to confuse Gupa here. I'm trying to like make her believe that, oh, come on. <laughs> uh, it didn't work. Deception tactics. All right, um, looks like those, those two stones are gonna escape. Oh, well, let them escape. Let them escape in an ugly shape. Well. Well, well, well. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Okay. Just connect. <gasps> and extend. And extend. And connect. My favorite kind of connection. Second line sneaky connection. And connect. <gasps> She wants me to make an empty triangle. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, empty triangle. I can't look. Uh. Okay, okay. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. All right. Someone was saying in the chat earlier, where are those eyes? Where are those eyes? Well, where are they? Here comes a big question. Yeah, yeah, I was kind of expecting this. Let's put it this way. A sacrifice. And just like, 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 like the. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Okay, just like this. This doesn't look good for white. Foxy flailing. <laughs> hey, what's going on here? This is a game between uh, Gooplet and me. Ten, I promised nine, a game last time, eight, so here it is. Seven, well, six, five. connect. Okay, connect, connect, connect. <clears throat> and connect, I hope. Yeah, this is like very much, very much uh, Fox. Kind of style, yeah. Like, 
just cut and attack and kill everything and just whatever works. Okay. Well, there's some cuts here. I don't like that. Hmm. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. This is going to be okay, though. This is so much pressure. 20 seconds is just uh, more pressure than I want to handle. Okay. And I'm going to... How do I kill this? Ten, nine. Just make it smaller. Just make it smaller. Classic. Take the vital point and reduce the amount of eye space and just hope it dies. And if it doesn't resign, I guess that's the plan. Best ghost streamer, not best short collar mic interface. Um, what do you mean? <laughs> like, uh, what? Oh, yeah. Probably. Always struggling with this mic. Terrible, terrible mic. Bad, bad one, bad mic. Go home. Thanks, thanks for the game. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, shall we take a look at it? Let's uh, let's see what was uh, what was happening here. I feel like I've sacrificed so much. All right. Uh, how do I review this? Review, and here we go. So, um, if I if I was white here, I would probably think of like because all of the, all of the black stones are so low and kind of boring, and it kind of is very an interesting position, and black can't make really a lot of uh, a lot of influence here. So probably I would push here. Like this is not when you're playing on a bigger board. This is not like the only move. But here, because since the black stone is so close, I would probably push, and this kind of forces black to do this. And now all of the black stones are in this very low position, and this kind of gives you more influence, more wall, and it, it takes away uh, all that influence from me. So I would do that, and, and then after this, probably, I mean, this is, this is very big, but still I think maybe approaching the corner would be even more important, because, um, like, I feel like... Um, after this, black is doing fine, and it's kind of hard to invade here a little bit. I mean, not really hard, but the gap is not so... The gap is quite narrow, and you have to think of some ways of invading lightly and being able to escape afterwards. So maybe I would probably approach here if I was white, just, just a matter of preference. I'm not sure this is necessarily better, but... Just a matter of my own preference, I'd probably invade just to make sure that black doesn't get all of the top. Just, just, just for that. Yeah, yeah. Also, call me. Call me is in your favor. It really works in your favor. And if you manage to leave black on the third line and just leave black on the on the left, just get a few points there. It's like how many? I don't know. Black will get, is going to get like fifteen points on the left and just a few points on the right. And if that's going to be the case, then white will probably win this, right? What is this game called? It's, uh, no, it's not uh, Honey But Joa yet. <laughs> Honey But Joa is suddenly playing on 13 by 13. No, this is just me playing against, uh, um, against Goplet here, against Gooplet, because uh, I promised her a game last time, and so we did. It was uh, an unusually fast-paced game for me. It was only 20 second B only, and, and, and she suggested would you believe me? She suggested five seconds, or what? It was, was it two seconds first? <gasps> okay. So, uh, but anyway, you, you, the move in the game it was really bad. I mean, it was fine, definitely. So I think this was a the beginning of like the, this was the first kind of like ding ring problem, uh, because typically um, we don't approach the corner like this. And if you if you do, I mean, maybe it, it, this is fine. One second per move. I feel like, what? I want to see this. Can I, 
We, do you ever play one second move, one second per move games on Twitch? So I would love to watch that. <laughs> I would just comment and be like, wow, she actually does it. She's doing that. Wow. How can I learn that? That's a good skill. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think if you invade like this, uh, this is like a typically, a typical like standard, uh, your textbook bad sort of approach because this immediately strengthens black, but it kind of hurts white and it doesn't make white stronger. So um, after this, you might want to just play very lightly. So this is probably fine. And after I kick, maybe you could consider even like instead of extending, which is probably fine, but maybe even jumping like this just to be sure that you escape and, you know, you reduce the black territory. But maybe the standard, the standard approach is still, is still fine. You could just start with this or with this immediately and just see what black does. It doesn't have to be so like mm, strength in black immediately because later if, if black let's say black takes the corner later you can you can think of uh not necessarily doing this but playing something like uh maybe this sort of attachment and and see if black does this and allow you to take more territory so th there's going to be more options if you leave out that exchange hyper bullet <laughs> 15 seconds flat for for side what was that and read that okay yeah yeah that's not really a thing for go mm. flat for side hyper bullet yeah i feel like my preferred time settings are i'm, I'm feeling so so it's like so old right now but my, my preferred settings are probably like one minute the only like i know right it sounds <sighs> who wants to think that long but I, I even managed to lose on time with that like thinking for one minute and then i hear this countdown and i'm like <sighs> okay i'm gonna i'm gonna skip this one and just lose one period uh, it was just in two seconds per move is generally kind of insane <laughs> you mean as in it's too fast or too slow so yeah uh this exchange White is still okay though. So maybe uh, this actually move for black was kind of bad. This is typically bad shape. And you, you normally, if you remember, like we talked about this, uh, I mean, I'm talking about all of you guys. We talked about this a couple of streams back uh, when, when white approaches, you don't want to kick like this and leave the corner open because later white will invade and you're going to be forced to make some compromises here. So when white invades immediately, and then yeah, now black is at a loss because I'm thinking, the best shape, like shape-wise, this is the move. But in this case, of course, white will connect, and ugh, I don't want this to happen, right? So uh, I, I, in the game, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to attack, and I compromise on shape, and I did this, which I know, I know, looks terrible. On go board that on chess board, when you move quickly because there are increasing, increasingly more stones on the board. Whereas in chess, you start with with uh, 32 and go down from there. Yeah, yeah. Adaption stone from bow. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, more movement. Yeah, it's like when you're playing live, like in a tournament, and you have Yomi, You have to leave out some th three or four seconds for the stone placement clock. Otherwise, nobody's going to do that for you. Anyways, this was probably the beginning of trouble here because white is not really alive in that corner, so maybe. Maybe after this exchange, since black is already kind of in a bad shape, you don't need to live there immediately, but maybe escape first. Escape first and leave that for later. Because if, if black doesn't do anything later, you might be able to cut something or live there. But for now, you just escape and make sure that this, this group on, on top will never, ever get under attack. Just, just escape like this. And black doesn't seem to have a lot of tears territory this way but in the game this I was wondering if this was possible but I guess I will cut and then this connection probably doesn't work right feels wrong I will, I will Atari and I will extend and this feels like yeah it feels like either either if you block from here then I will probably kill yeah this, this doesn't feel right so this was impossible 
So this, this should have been left for later, at the beginning of the end. Yeah, and the problem with this is that, yeah, it's not even alive. So this, this is a classic, like, this is a classic L, what we call the L plus one shape. The, like this is the L, wait, this shape is the L shape, which we all know to be dead, like dead, 100% dead, it, always. And then this makes it the L plus one, and now it depends on who moves here. It depends on who plays here first. And since now it's Black's turn, so technically it doesn't matter which, like Black can always make a move here right now and kill. And that's not a good feeling, like knowing that there's a group there that Black can kill. And it doesn't matter what move you make, like this one or, or this one, like nothing really saves the group. So yeah, this is, uh, it, it's very nice for Black to play like this, knowing that there's a group dying in the corner. So if you start attacking me, I know I, there's always a backup plan. I can always like go back to that and it's like, oh, okay, okay, just, just don't kill me. I'm gonna kill that white group instead. Before the Fox floundering kicked in, yeah. Yeah. So this, 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 and yeah, so here, this was a bit of a fox <laughs> type move because uh, of course it probably a lot easier for black is just to play here immediately and, and this kills. But uh, I, I, I went for like, okay, let's go and attack the white group. But, and probably white could have, uh, this was a nice, actually, nice little thing. Maybe without the exchange though. Wait, let's see, maybe without. And if I do this, wow, it's, it doesn't seem so simple. Like here, and uh, like this. It's, it's still, I feel like uh, I can sacrifice something and I can cut it off. Wait, is there a better way? Anyone, anyone has any better idea here? How do we, how do we manage this white group on the top? Because white needs to somehow live. If, if white, like, forget about the corner. The, the, upper, the upper right corner is, is just nonsense. But if, if white manages to live this top group, then at least there's still, there's still something. If, the, if white can escape now. Anyone? Any better suggestions? Mike? Anton? Anybody? What is a better plan here for white? I mean, I feel like white definitely just got to have a way to live here. It's just, it's just there's no, it's no, it's no way that white is dying there. I mean, I feel like even if you do something like this, something like this first, this kind of, this sort of exchange, and then you do something like this, this already becomes very hard to kill. Um, like if, if living is, um, is important and we're not even trying to like break away, uh, but we just want to live, then I guess this, this is a way to sort of live. Maybe there's an even better move. And after this, do 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 do. Connection here, connection here. Mm, nice looking move here, but doesn't cut. Terrible shapes for black everywhere. Absolutely, but uh, the, the the main point is that if if the corner if if the corner was alive right now, this upper upper right, then yeah, black might have been in trouble because uh, black doesn't have any eyes. But black, deep in his funky little brain knows that, uh, well, the white is gonna die right now, so, you know. What if white played d8? d8, well, at which point? You mean like right now? Like, like here? Hey, hey, player. Um, if, if white plays d8, yeah, this is exactly what I was thinking about. Yeah, th this is what white actually did in the game. Uh, Gooblet played uh, c6. She like pushed through trying to cut me and uh, there were too many weaknesses. Yeah, I, I was like, okay, I can't, like in the game later, you see, when she played here and here. And then, yeah, th this here, I, I had to do this. I didn't, I didn't defend like this because I, I was afraid that something might just collapse 
And if I wanted to save everything, like the corner and all the territory, and kill white, I felt like this was a, this was a bit too much to ask. So I, I just gave up the corner entirely, and, and this was a, a price to pay. So yeah, instead of this, I just made myself stronger. So if, if there's a cut, like if, if white cuts, I would just take it. And if white uh, pushes now, I, I just uh, give it up in, in the same way. As long as I'm alive here, I'm good. Yeah. And uh, this is probably enough for black, because uh, white definitely gets a lot of points, and uh, white kills a very big corner. But that's not enough as long as I kill the two, two other groups. Fun game. Too fast. Lightning fast, but uh, I mean, for me, in my uh, uh, old geezer's terms, it's a little too too fast. But yeah, so much fun. Thanks a lot. Uh, maybe play another game some sometime soon. Um, maybe next stream, if we have a stream in English. I think we do. Do we? Maybe not. But uh, anyway, next time we, we do a stream in English, we could play again. And yeah, also... A word of uh, welcoming to to everyone out there. If you, if you would like to play on the, on the stream, just come and uh, come and let's play because uh, it, it's so much fun. Uh, it's I mean we can't we, we can't just talk about Georgia all the time and just show pictures and you know and uh, talk about Tony Bajoa and those historical games. So that's boring. So let's let's just, let's just play and uh, and have fun sometimes. All right, let me get back to um, this. Oh, okay, uh, what if after d8, uh, wait, how do I? Uh, wait. Plays e9 and squeezes. e9, let me, let me have a look. e9. Oh, e9 and squeezes, and, uh, hmm. Yeah, that could have been a possible plan, but I guess it, the, wait. All right, let me let me sh show you the screen once again because I'm like I'm looking at it all by myself here. All right, so if if uh, maybe there there could have been something. I mean, there there's probably got to be a way for Black to uh, give up the freaking corner and just, just just kill the other group. If I'm giving up the corner, then at least there's got to be something. But I don't think there's anything better than this Atari. So, I mean, maybe actually, if you push here, I could just, oh yeah, I could just take. First of all, I could just take, and this would have been easier. And, but even if you like do this immediately, and this is Sente, sure. But then there are no more sente moves, right? This is not sente anymore. Now you're not taking the corner. Well, actually, as long as I don't die here, then I'm okay with not killing this. So it's like for me, it's a it's a it's a it's a choice between either killing the top or taking the uh, saving all of the territory on the left. If I get to save that, then I'm okay with white living there on the top. I'm not that like bloodthirsty. So if, 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 for example, uh, fair play, yeah, so I think this should be, this should be fine. <laughs> All right. That was a fast game. Well, um, since Honey but Joe is going to take some time, but, uh, I feel like Mm, I'm I'm a little uh, yeah. It's been a nice day here. Um, hot weather. Yay! Um, sure, you're welcome. You're welcome. Not, next time you crush me and you review the game for me. So play a nineteen by nineteen. Maybe I was I was thinking maybe some other stream. Maybe next time or you know some. Other, uh, I want to try like playing nineteen by nineteen and like just because every time we start talking and I just talk and I talk and I talk and I just don't shut up. But if uh, uh, we could use that time to play an actual like 19 by 19. So <laughs> that, that could be uh, a, a way to shut me up a little bit. <laughs> anyway, so I was thinking maybe we could play it. Um, anybody wants to play another game? Yep, sounds like fun. Because uh, it's a little too early to start talking about Hanimba Joey here. Oh, I forgot that, yeah. 
what am what am I doing? I'm just my head is all like messed up. So yeah, once I'm ready, says Alexander. Yeah, we'll we'll get that. But wait, wait, first I need to say a few words. Like, what am I doing here? Because uh, yeah, of course we're not just uh, live streaming. This is a Go Magic live stream once again. Uh, my name is Vadim, and uh, today we're streaming specifically for like uh, because we're releasing the new course very soon. And if you're wondering what Go Magic really means, I think a lot of people watching here already know what Go Magic is. But just in case, uh, Go Magic is an is a new platform with uh, interactive video courses and we also do like skill trees for practicing uh, pra pr practicing problems of like different areas in Go. Let me show you. So, so this is our website and uh, these are all of the courses that we have so far and this is the one course that I'm talking about here on uh, in the top left. The Fury Style of Hanimba Joa and the Blood, as you can't read it here, but it is the Blood Vomiting game. That's one of the most famous games in Go history, like one of the most famous games ever played. So cool, and uh, I've seen this game just so many times, but like the first time in, in history we can actually analyze those old games with, uh, with the AI. And this is exactly what we did for the course. So, yeah. <laughs> Hype for the course! Clearly Joa was underrated. Uh, Joe, well, well, I don't know. I mean, Joe is considered to be one of the strongest Meijins in Japanese Go history. So, well, and, and he's like really one of the strongest. He's, his style is, is just so cool. It's, it's precise. It's just a lot of calculation, a lot of brute force, a lot of uh, aggression, a lot of fighting, a lot of cuts. So, I don't know. He's really, really cool. I think they're being sarcastic. Well, probably. I don't know. Um, well, Saying that Joe is underrated, I mean maybe. Uh, right now, actually, I will I will talk about that in the course. But uh, Joe kind of lost part of his reputation because uh, he used to be uh, he used to be considered like really regarded one of the greatest players in Japan like of all times before. Uh, just like in the sense of when people learn, like when people come into Go and they think of uh, they think of Honimbo Shusaku, as they, especially if they after they watched Hikaru no Go. And they think of Hanimba Shusaku as like one of the most famous Japanese players ever. But Hanimba Joa used to have the exact same reputation, but he kind of lost it. And I'm not going to spoil why he lost it, but you, you, will, you, will, find, uh, you will find that in the course. <laughs> so yeah, this, this, is, this is the one course, and we're releasing it very, very soon. And uh, as for the rest of it, there's the skill tree. And this is the basic skill tree for now. And uh, once, you, once you sign up here, uh, it will open, and you can start uh, doing it. And this is the like the skill tree with the basics of Go. Uh, I think roughly for players from like 30Q to 2018Q. And then for anyone stronger than that, it's going to be the second skill tree, and then the third one, and the fourth one. And we're working on, we're currently working on the second skill tree. Is there a 30-day trial uh, so I can speed speed run the website? <laughs> Good one, Tongye. But no. Uh, but then we have a lot of stuff like you can definitely by all means check out the skill tree. It's all free I think it's like it's we're not There's a lot of stuff on the website, which is actually free like some of the courses are free and uh, uh, all the articles uh, are free and the, the skill tree so Seigen, Longshi, Dosaku, Shusaku, Joa Mm, yeah, and we'll probably need to make a course about each one of them because these are just so good. So yeah, um, this is the website, and um, today we're talking about the, this this one course that is coming. All right, let me get back. And yeah, also we have this. Uh, which way should I point? Point this 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 yeah uh, donations here. For Gina moving to Georgia, Gina is Anton's dog, the Go Magical dog, and uh, obviously she's moving to Georgia at some point, probably. And uh, also we have this roulette which we set up, and uh, and yeah, I, I asked uh, Gooplet yesterday about the polls and like how, how to set them up, and I, I think we've uh, we've come up with a solution for today. So I'm I'm gonna be asking you some questions. There's gonna be some polls when we review the games, and uh, yeah, we have this roulette. Let me show you this. To dum the magic roulette, and uh, we're doing this. Uh, for donations, and uh, I, 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 we're we're trying to fill it up with some, like we're 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 filling it up with some ridiculous things. 
So if you have any suggestions, I, I, I'm always asking you guys, just please, please uh, send them to the chat because uh, if, if you have any ridiculously cool suggestions, we'll put them down there in the roulette as well. Yeah, someone suggested uh, me playing one color go, but you know, that's going to take a while and it's just so much pain. <laughs> So we're not doing that. And then someone else said I, I should stand on my uh, like on my hands, like playing upside down. Come on, Chinese lesson. Yes. Oh, oh judging by your name, you're Chinese, right? Uh, yeah, I've, I've I've lived in China for a while, and I um, so it's gonna be a not 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 a real Chinese lesson, but not like okay, let's learn the tones of the of Mandarin. But no, I mean some. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, jokes, he's not, <laughs> he's not, hey, Lion Guy Sai, hey, yeah, I remember you came to, the, to my stream and you said you were a streamer as well, and I, I, I didn't know about you, but then I, I watched some of your, some of your stuff, yeah, hey, kudos, so yeah, this, this is the roulette, and here's how it works, let me do a one, one cycle, to dum so yeah, we have some, uh, oh, catch the cat, yeah, that's the, yay. Uh, yeah, Catch the Cat, that's the, uh, that's the game, uh, children's game that we have on our website. And uh, I'm going to, uh, like, once I do that, then I would have to go to the website and, uh, and have a go at uh, catching the cat. <laughs> Essentially, that's, uh, that's how it works. Anyway, so let's get back to, uh, anyone wants to play one more game? Alex Han said yes, but Alex Han, we already played. So um, I, was, I was wondering if there's anyone new that I haven't played yet. If there's no one else, then, then I guess we'll have to play Alex Han. But I'm, I'm just always asking for like, you know, new people to come here. Oh, <gasps> play. How strong are you, Tang Jie? How strong are you? It's like everyone, yeah, play Tang Jie. Get crushed. <laughs> so I haven't done. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh come on. Seven down, eight down, fox. Okay. Uh, I'm six down, fox. So and and I'm still hoping to become seven down, or maybe even eight down in the future. Nine down, probably too ambitious and not realistic. But eight down, I'm thinking two stones. It's still kind of doable. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. Uh, yeah, but we're we're gonna play a small let's let's play a small game because we still have, need to talk about Joe and we have two games to review tonight. So uh, let's play a nine by nine. What do you think? Is it okay? Good luck with Tongjie. It's like Vadim, you didn't you didn't agree to play me. No, go play Tongjie and get crushed. <laughs> OGS. Is that okay? Nine by nine works. Please crush me. No, no, no. I'm I'm not a nine by nine. I, even though I should like, because I'm playing pretty regularly, nine by nine on on live streams. So by I think by by now I should just just go somewhere and study nine by nine at least the basic stuff. But every time I come here, I'm like, oh, I haven't been practicing. What am I gonna do? Way too pro. <laughs> Way too pro. <laughs> Way too. Way too. Ah. Mm. Yeah, a nine, a Go Quest is, is, is perfect. Uh, I love Go Quest, but I, I'm, I'm playing it because uh, like, I think um, OGS has a better interface just to, to show on, on, on Twitch. But um, uh, for like everyday use, Go Quest is, is, is incredible. Yeah, Go Quest. I also highly recommend Go Quest to anyone who wants to play a 9x9, for example, a quick, a quick game. All right, uh, way too pro. Let me find you. Uh, not, not for this game, surely. Yeah, yeah, just in general. All right, way too pro. Hmm, way too pro, like too done, right? It says too done. I'm not a way too pro. <laughs> Okay. Challenge. Nine by nine. And we're gonna do a bit more time for me to talk about nonsense. Uh, let's do 45 seconds and 
maybe some basic time. Let's do some main time, like uh, five minutes or something. I hope I'm not going to use up all of that. Just, just oh, please, please, not don't make me use up all of that. And here we go. I think yes. Game started. Okay. Cool. I'm black. Uh, it's a bad sign. Black. Call me. Call me. You have call me. Isn't Yung Yung like HQ and Go Quest? Yung Yung is like the Yung Yung the the a dumb professional. <laughs> that, that that is indeed very bizarre. Um. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Um. Well, let's try with the center. I, I, I usually don't play like this, but let's give it a shot. And then... I'm gonna try and do this. I haven't played nine by nine in a while. Yeah, yeah. Like I told you, I'm, I'm not lying. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I play nine by nine uh, every stream probably once, but that's about it. I used to play on Go Quest before, but I, I haven't done that in a while. I've been lazy, and also I've been playing a lot of mahjong. And oh yeah, and you're Chinese, so mahjong should really make uh, should ring a bell to you. You guys play mahjong all the time, right? Mahjong is a lot more popular in China than it is in, uh, in, in uh, uh, like anywhere else, actually. Well, if I go... Oh, you play Mahjong So You do. I, I, me too as well. I, I play Richie Mahjong. Yeah, I, I don't play... I played Chinese as well when I was in China, but, uh, you know, Chinese people always gamble, and, uh, and Chinese Mahjong is a little different. But reach mahjong is uh, is like is, is a lot more fun and uh, yeah I play mahjong so uh, as well uh, I, pl I I tried tenho but I still think that I'm not mature enough to play on tenho reach yeah every, every everyone is just, like, so, suddenly I was thinking here was me thinking that you know go is that much of a like a non popular game but then reach mahjong is definitely so much less popular than that, and then everyone seems to know about that, and everyone is like, yeah, sure, we play Mahjong, yeah, Reach Mahjong, sure. Mike plays Reach Mahjong, Anton plays Reach Mahjong, everybody plays Reach Mahjong. What's your, uh, uh, what's your status now on, uh, on, on, on Mahjong Soul? Like, uh, uh, adept, or expert, or uh, what is it? Don't tell me you're a saint or something like that. What should I, if I play E3 right now, he's definitely gonna invade. So, uh, yeah, I'll be using my five minutes. Oh, adapt, okay. I feel like there's no, there's no choice here really. I just have to play this. I mean, I know this is like, so just wonderfully unreasonable but i just i feel like there's no choice here but to play this and now i just do so symmetrical yeah so much symmetry here uh mahjong ss uh he's i think roth ss roth uh like underscore ss that guy he's a saint yeah, yeah yeah if you're talking about him wait i and i'm a um i just got to master i was an expert with three stars for for the longest time and i just got to master with one star and now i'm trying to get get higher there's going to be a tournament uh in russia and they only accept uh masters with two stars so i need to get that wait uh i should attack and i don't know what i should attack first 
probably I should attack this. Well, I feel like a computer would just say, play something like h4 right now. It's attack low, hit him on the knees and just, you know, make him suffer. But I feel like this is like the proper shape. And white will probably want to play something like g7 right now. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, I don't think there's much choice here. I will just... Uh... Wait, what is there? Can I push first? No, if, I, if I push, I'm helping him. So I'm, I'm going to block. And I feel like what wants to live in this corner in Sente or something, and then uh, and then also strengthen the left group. And if white does that, then I'm screwed, I think. <laughs> if white manages to live everywhere, like effortlessly, then I, I just have to admit that I, uh, I picked the wrong strategy. But hopefully, way too pro. Uh, Told the truth, and he does not have a lot of experience with nine by nine, so he might not. He might get confused and you know, just struggle and die somewhere. That that's going to be the perfect scenario. Poof. Total collapse of one of the corners. Boom, boom, collapse. Yeah, I was kind of thinking about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. White wants to. White wants to. Yeah, but I don't think that with all of these exchanges. I mean, yeah, that that's sente for sure. But with all, with all of these exchanges, I don't think that white is safe in that corner. I still think that white will have to add another stone, right? Okay, that is clever. That is clever. And I don't think I have time to answer this anymore. The central point would be go, go, on and on by nine, right? Uh, oh, you mean go, go, like, uh, as in, like, uh, Japanese words? Like, well, they say go, no, go, right? Uh, yeah, this would be... But I think they wouldn't call this go, no, go. Uh, they would still say tengen in Japanese, because this is the center point. Or if, uh, since we're playing with a Chinese guy, then it should be Tian Yuan, uh, the, the central point. Always talks about Mahjong. <laughs> I regretted 25 times that I taught him to play Mahjong. Now he has less time to go. Yeah, it was a, blame him, blame this guy. He taught me how to play Mahjong. He was like, Vadim, there's this very cool game you want to check out. I was like, no, I don't. And he said, no, yes, you do. You, you, this is a really nice game. You really, you really need to, to learn the rules. All right, let's uh, let's attack that first. And then he just he just sh showed me the rules, and he forced them onto me. I didn't want to learn them. The, the rules are very complicated. If you ever want to learn, like pick up mahjong, don't, because this is like this is a, the, the bottomless pit. It will it will it will steal up all of your time. Don't don't ever do that. Very difficult rules and a lot of complicated stuff. Like go is so much easier. You learn the rules like in five minutes, or ten minutes, if you're a little slow. <laughs> but mahjong, geez, it takes like an hour at least, an hour and a half maybe, to like uh, learn all of the difficult like rules and details and stuff. Yeah, so many win conditions. Yeah, so many yaku, those things. Ah, what is happening? Wait, can I actually capture this? But if I capture, I think I should capture, right? Well, I capture. I capture, and then I do this. Yeah, this is a sad story. If I get cut here, this is going to be real bad. I don't like that. But I don't have a choice. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. And now I probably 
push here one. I tried getting into Mahjong, but it bounced off me. Yeah, yeah, Mahjong is, oh, hey, someone just followed again. Sorry, I just, uh, I'm not paying attention because this is a, a very complex game here. <sighs> so much stuff going on, and I'm, I think, I feel like I'm losing here. Again, can I take that stone? All right, let's take it. I want to take that stone just to make myself stronger and just to make sure that I'm not dead anywhere. I just, I'm, I'm alive. And because in case white wants to cut here somewhere, like with uh, E4 or with F2 or anything like this, then at least I'm alive on top. I'm probably alive here. So I'm, I'm going to be okay. And white still needs to... Oh yeah, actually white, maybe white doesn't have to respond which would be sad. I was kind of hoping that white needs to respond right now. On the right, it feels like white is weak, but also, also white, I think white has like me eye of either living, either living or capturing my stone. Hmm. Well, we'll see. Oh, he responded. Then I guess I will... Oh, this is actually... All right. This is... It's getting bad. <laughs> I need to capture the stone right now. This is, this is like the proper move to play. Yeah, I feel like I should do that. This is the move to play. Capture it fancily. Well, yeah, I was uh, I was thinking of continuing the attack and trying to do something more, but I feel like if I do that, that's going to be overplay, because uh, I, I will leave a lot of weaknesses, and uh, then White could probably split me and attack those three stones separately. So I, I better get all connected and see what happens next. I feel like the game is not going well well for me, but let's see. Because there's still a weakness here for, for white on the right. And at h7, I can still cut and uh, capture something. Yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, white gets this. And also white will get uh, e2, which is kind of nice. Well, I'm going to cut. Oh, this is a co. Interesting. Okay. And take. Hmm. <laughs> now I need to come up with some seriously good co threats. I need a lot of co threats. Like, I need more co. Uh, I need as many co-threats as I can possibly manage. And I don't think that D3 is the best one here. Because if I push, white will block. I have one more, maybe two more, and that's it, right? It's not enough, not good enough. I don't have any, any points. And white has points and Komi. So white is winning easily. So I need to do something here. And I don't think I, there's anything, actually. How many? Four periods, okay. I feel like actually white doesn't need this co at all. White is winning. So even if I like extend, white can just live and give up this, this stone and just take those points and win the game. So the only way for me to win is probably if, if white somehow... Jayo, thank you. I'm trying. <laughs> ah, countdown. Seven, six, five, 
Okay. All right, let's cut like this. It's a bit of a negative cold thread. Okay. Oh, no co. C3 is a Tsuji, actually. It's not really negative. Whoa. A seven done said that it's a Tsuji. <sighs> La, there's a little light coming here. Like, yes. Really? Does it mean I'm going to win the game? Because that would be very nice. Hey, someone just followed. Wait, what, what, what? My turn, my turn. D4 now. Wait, D4 I cut. White has to capture. And I will Atari. And then I will let... Okay, yeah, well, I mean, of course, D4, yeah. D4 is the only move. And this is a Ko if white wants to Atari. So if white Ataris, I will definitely play this Ko. Because I have Ko threat. Oh, okay. This is a nice Ko. Wait, wait do I have Ko threat? Wait a second. Do I have co threat? Is this a co threat? <gasps> this is not. All right, let's just do this. And Wait, is this a co threat? Because if it's not, then. DE1 should be fine. Well, then white will capture. Okay. Let's try this. Maybe this is completely wrong, but I, I don't know. Okay. Wrong. Yeah, I feel like I got myself into a very unpleasant situation here. All right, take. And take. And this is not a co anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, this is... The end. I feel like I've, uh, I've messed it up, right? It could have been better, but now I just have to resign, I guess. Ah. Oh well. Where's that resign button? Here it is. Sad. Sad. So what was that? You said, oh, let's review this. Oh, come on. Thanks, thanks, yeah. Thank you, that was a fun, that was a fun game, but uh, I feel like I never had a chance here. Well, even though Happy Looks, Happy Looks says that I did, I did have a chance here. All right, let's see what what, hap what was happening here. You said, um, so after this, I can't connect. So this, this, just like that, and this, that. No, I can't do this, right? This is ridiculous. Like this? Wait, but I, in this case, well, I'm alive, definitely. Like, I'm alive, that white can do this. I'm like, this is alive. But then white can also capture this one. And I'm gonna have to, like, let's imagine that this happened like this, and I connect, and, uh, I feel like this is, white is still winning this, right? Mm. 
D7 is better. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. D7, yeah. Yeah, D7. And, but I, I feel, I, white has Comey. White has Comey, and white has Comey, and that's going to be enough for white. White has how many points? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, plus Comey, that's like 15 and a half. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and that's not enough. So yeah, this was possible, but it wasn't winning the game for me. So probably the mistake happened somewhere way before, way before all of that. So maybe here somewhere? Yeah, this move was very nice. Like every time I see this Tsuji played against me, I'm like, fuck, I'm <laughs> not again, this one. Tangjie, what do you what do you think? Where was the like where was the point where the game became very good for you and like hopeless for me? Where was that point? Which move? E8. Oh, wait. Well, thank you for not saying that this was the first move. You answered my second line. Oh, I answered your second line move. Yeah, you're right. Well, I was thinking that I'm, I'm answering it, but then let's say you, you defend the corner and then I get this move, this move, which I thought was like a nice trade-off. You get, I, I answer your move and you live in the corner, but then I get to play b7. But I guess you're right. You can g7 here. Oh, you mean g7? Oh. Oh, that's a nice jump in. Oh, nice shape here. Right. Yeah, I was in the game. I thought of this one and I discarded this immediately because like, this, this looks ugly. But actually, maybe it was even better than e8 anyway, but this shape looks good. And if white cuts, I do. Well, I actually I can even do this, right? Can I connect like this? Connect, cut, block here, block. Well, if I do this, and this, this, this doesn't seem to work. Yeah, g6 is probably better. So when white cuts, I do this. And, well, I still can't do this, right? White will capture. So I need to connect like this, which means that my, my upper side gets demolished. So white can do this, or white can actually connect first. And after something like that, this looks pretty damn good for white. You can cut. Wait, what? Where? My apologies. My 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 head is not thinking straight while I'm talking on 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 Twitch. With three. Oh wait, three here. Instead of h5, oh, instead of h5, you said I should cut. But then white descends, and, and what's the plan? Oh, this is sente. You're making a sacrifice in the corner to get a better position on the left. Okay, well, in this case, white probably needs to wait. What is white going to do? Can white push now like this? Well, after this, I will still kill, I will kill the two stones, right? Do I kill them? I do, yeah, I kill them. The question is, is this gonna be enough? For example, if we do this exchange like this and I kill, oh, variation. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's, that's, uh... wait, let me see what was happening here. So this, cut, whoa, I would never think of this move. Who do you take me for? This, but why, why a diagonal move? Why not like a H7? Diagonal move seems so fancy. 
What? Did you just analyze it with Catago? Because this, this seems like a Catago kind of move. Yeah, this seems like incredibly complex, but this is not realistic. Extra liberty. Oh, what? Eat that. Ah, too many, too many variations here. I don't like variation to be honest. Okay, let's see variation two. What is this? Okay, this looks similar to what I was looking at. This, this, white takes, and black probably plays something like this. This looks kind of okay. I mean, black has a lot of points, but the question is, is it enough? It looks, it looks close. But I feel like white is still doing good here. With Komi, white has a huge corner, and it's white's turn right now, so white can... Well, actually, I got 11 to 14 from Kata, but I, I read the beginning variation I'm in the game. Okay. Yeah, I still need to uh, work on my 9x9, nine nine. definitely. After variations like these, I feel like pff, I'm not even close. I'm not even close to playing a good game. Yeah, I, I wasn't thinking about this move in the game, but I should have. This move seems so obvious. Like this is a kind of a, such a shape jump for black. And also it's a, it's a, it's a shape splitting. It splits the white shape apart. It's like, why didn't I think of this? Why? Yeah. Is there any pro who is an expert in 9x9? Nine nine? Um, well, I think there are some pros who've been uh, experimenting with 9x9 with nine because nine, uh, I think there, there's been some professionals trying to solve nine by nine, and as far as I can, as far as I know, it's, it hasn't been solved yet. Like even computers haven't solved nine by nine yet. Uh, I think we're close to solving like uh, six by six or something. Seven by seven is like almost solved, but again, not not completely, like not uh, totally solved. And uh, even eight by eight is not solved yet. So we still a long way to go. For even for computers to solve like the mathematically and like totally solve all the variations and know exactly the outcome, but pretty close, yeah. All right, thanks for the game. That was a uh, uh, fun, uh, a different kind of fun though compared to the first game. The first one was like yay attack and fox style kill everything and try to do that stuff fun things, but here is like we need to think. A lot of precision is required. <laughs> All right, let's... Um... Mike, can I have some more tea, please? Right, thanks. So let's uh, finally get to something, uh, something important. It's all, fun and games. it's all fun and games until somebody loses an eye, and I just did. So uh, let's get to... Um, reviewing a game of uh, Honey Bajoa. And uh, it's... So I promised that I would tell you a few words about his opponent in the blood vomiting game. Is, uh, is, uh, yeah, it's, if the Fox game just hit me up. Um, okay, I'll uh, write that down. And uh, sure, sure, I would love to play. Because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find enough time in between like work, Mahjong, and everything else to actually play some serious games on Fox and uh, trying to work on my mistakes and the things that I do wrong and then I reviewed them and then also uh, asked uh, Alexander Jr. Stein some questions and then come back and play more games, get killed again. So yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'll, uh, yeah, if I see you online, I'll hit you up. Thank you. So um, last time, during last uh, during la last live stream on Twitch, um, we talked about um, we talked about Himbo Joa being one of the strongest mages and uh, uh, a very aggressive sort of player. And I showed you one of the, one of his games from his earlier years. But today, I wanted to talk a little bit about his opponent in the blood vomiting game because everyone knows him as Akaboshi and Tetsu, uh, who just played that blood vomiting game, and it seems like he never played any more games in his life. But he did. He was the uh, he was a student at one of the four major uh, go schools in Japan at that time, the Inoue School, and that was that same very school where uh, Genan Inseki 
and the same Ganon and Seki who played uh, the ear reddening game with Shizaku, where he was the uh, the head teacher, and uh, Akaboshi in, in Tetsu was his best uh, student. Well, I, I, and I, interestingly enough, uh, Akaboshi his name is written in Japanese like Aka means uh, red, and Boshi it's the same as Hoshi like star, so it's like a red star. Akaboshi means a red star. What a beautiful name. The school of uh, famous game losers. <laughs> I love you now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Akaboshi was one of the best students, and everyone thought that he was going to become Meijin sometime soon. He was a. Uh... Hey, Miguel. Welcome, welcome to Go Magic. Uh, so Akaboshi was uh, uh, very young, and but everyone saw that he was incredibly talented. He was a genius, and uh, he played. Uh, he was quickly rising to the top, and when he was like twenty, maybe twenty-two or twenty-three, he already became seven done, which at that time was uh, uncommon because, like today, as you know, a lot of the stronger players they they study hard from from the time when they're like five years old, and then then they become professionals at the age of twelve or something. But at that time, being a seven done, because all those promotions were so much slower, and you had to like rise through those ranks and play a lot of tournaments, play play a lot of other players, and and those very long drawn matches to be able to get your next promotion from like one done to two done, and it, it, all those duns were just more serious than they are today. Yeah. Hey. Okay. And uh, so uh, Akaboshi being seven done at such a young age was just something uh, quite surprising. And uh, so that's why everyone believed that he was going to be the next, uh, the next top player of Japan. And uh, probably Joa himself believed that because Joa and Akaboshi, apart from that blood vomiting game that they played when Akaboshi was 25 years old, they played several games actually. When uh, young Akaboshi was growing, Haniba Joe knew him very well. They played several handicap games. And I'm going to show you one of those games today. And this is not going to be just any game. I'm going to show you the first game that they played. The first, uh, like the first live encounter that they had. Uh, and Akaboshi, this was in, in 1827. So uh, Haniba Joe was, was uh, 40 years old, I think. And Akaboshi was like 17. 17 versus 40. Uh, uh, Akaboshi was a little weaker then, and Honiba Joa was not yet Meijin. He would become Meijin later. He was still, I think, a 7 down player. And Akaboshi was maybe 4 down or something like that. I don't even know. So I'm going to ask you some questions during the game. And, um, well, just in case, be prepared. Uh, and just... I think that Akaboshi played this game in a very nice style. I'm always, like, when I'm playing a game, especially a handicap game, when somebody gives me a handicap, I'm thinking, wow, how can I play in a very thick and, like, territory-oriented style so that my player, my, my opponent doesn't really have much chance at, at attacking me? And this is exactly how Akaboshi played in this game. So let's have a look. Yeah, especially compared with Joa, the late bloomer. Yeah, Joa, Joa became uh, very strong very, very late. Joa got to... Actually, I think Joa had just gotten to 7 Dun. If he was 40 years old, uh, he, he, he became 7 Dun at the age of 40, compared to Akaboshi, who was 7 Dun at 25. So let's go to... Uh, wait, let's go... To OGS. Let me open the game first. Oh, it's already here. Wait. I like it how it says here, like the date of the game, November 29th, 1827. It feels like as if it's just one of those regular OGS games. Like this game. 2021 played on in, in, in August or something, so July, and then this one is like 1827, <laughs> it's like 200 years ago. All right, so this is the end of the game, and this is the beginning. 
Uh, this was the game where the school prepared a special response to Taisha, uh, correct? No, 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 no. That's the, the game you were talking about. That's the famous blood vomiting game. And that's the one that I go into very much detail in the course, uh, in the course on Go Magic. And that's the course that we're releasing very, very soon. Uh, I, I will re I'm reviewing that game for like three video lessons straight. Yeah, so that's the, that's the famous game. But this, the game that I'm showing right now, is not a very famous game. This is a game that actually nobody probably knows. And this is the first time they played. This is um, eight years before the Blood Vomiting game. All right, so let's take a look. Um, Honey Bajoa is playing white, obviously, and he's giving two stone handicap to young 17-year-old Ak Akaboshi. So here we go. And uh, notice that uh, the computer is not going to agree with all of, the, all of their moves and all of Black's moves here. Not necessarily, but um, it's just, it's interesting because it can, the computer always goes for the, like, for the most sharp, for the sharpest and for the most aggressive and like the, the option that just takes that win rate to the top. But Akaboshi is not doing that, of course. Akaboshi knows that he's playing against a, a, a much more experienced opponent, so he wants to keep the game simple and thick. And it's just surprising how much he can do once he makes all of the groups strong. All right, so black approaches, pincer, attach, very simple. A bamboo joint here. White takes the corner. Uh, typically, th th this shape leaves some weaknesses, and typically, I think today we might see something like that, just to not leave any weaknesses. But... Uh, Fine. I think the computer was suggesting that uh, as, as a probe, black should may maybe cut here because this creates a lot of the weaknesses in, in, uh, in, in white shape. So it's no surprise that once black didn't do that, white protected immediately. Now white is strong. Good. Black makes double pincer. Okay. Simple. White lives. Attack. This is Joa, and Joa is a very aggressive player, you remember? He attacks everything he can. Of course, this is a handicap game, so he has to attack, otherwise he's going to lose the game. Black gets around it, but of course, Black lives in the corner. Okay. And again, this move is uh, a little submissive. You can just tell that there, there probably could have been something better than that. But again, uh, all of those moves, they're just... Maybe a tiny bit, it's just a tiny bit worse than the best moves offered by Katago or by Leela, but they still, like, they keep a very, they keep the, this whole position very simple and uh, not leaving any weaknesses to, 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 for white to attack. A simple connection. Now this creates kind of me eye of uh, cutting here. Uh, like cutting at Q, Q7, or maybe connecting here at the bottom. And also the corner can live with Q2. Now, white attack. Cut. No weaknesses for white. Black lives. And uh, here, the computer actually thinks that uh, black doesn't need to add any moves. So the computer says that black at this point should play something like this. Just, just take that corner, and uh, the corner is not killable, says Katago. But of course, it seems that if if White now attacks, if White now does something like uh, I don't know, something like this, and then this, and then takes the stones, yeah, the corner is alive. But uh, White becomes so much thicker. Everything, like all of the White stones, are now connected. Everything is just so strong, and the, this this uh, P, this stone. This P7 stone just lost all of its meaning. It's not, it's now not a cutting stone. It's just a stone that was left there and just dies. So it's not surprising that Black, that Akaboshi didn't like this variation, even though he probably knew that he was not going to die there. So he makes himself stronger. Okay, white attacks. And this. Um, so actually, uh, we talked about invasions all the time because we just we, we, we have this course on invasions and I've been thinking about invasions a lot recently. But this invasion in particular is not 
probably the best because white is uh, maybe white is not strong enough to do this. So um, maybe white can just leave the stones because playing like this doesn't feel very happy for white. So maybe white could just ignore ignore this and not play anything. But this this attachment, the problem is that uh, black has a ladder. White doesn't have a ladder. The ladder doesn't work for white. And so here, oh, how do I? Let me review the game so I don't see these uh, variations offered by EA. OK, let's go quickly to this point again. Yeah, so after this, Atari. And here comes the problem. White extends. Black just takes it. And it would be very nice for white to Atari here, take the stone, and that would be very nice, right? Black gets some points, but white gets thickness, and white is and black is all separated. This this black stone at uh, C thirteen, it just gets uh, totally totally isolated. That'd be nice, except it doesn't work because um, black is just going to escape. The ladder doesn't work, and uh, there's there's nothing there's nothing white can do about this. So uh, Joa maybe should have thought about this ladder before he played this. So in in the game, he really had to be happy with this. Just make himself stronger on the outside, give up the points, and again, and Atari. And at this point, you still feel like white is not really strong enough, right? This whole white group, the shape is not perfect, and uh, you really want to do something about it. And uh, well, Joe would thought that he didn't, and this is very, very typical of him. Uh, whereas any other player might, could have thought that this white group requires an answer. It, it needs an extra move to, to make shape, to save it. But Joa is not this kind of guy. He's the kind of player who likes to counterattack. So Joa, instead of adding any move, which Katago seems to be necessary, uh, just sees as necessary, by the way, Katago thinks that white should play something like this right now to just to make sure that the shape is okay and that white can escape happily here without any possible shape complications in the future. But uh, Joa says no. Joa says, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to attack this corner. What are you going to do, Black? Because Black, you know, you are just 17 years old. You don't know how to handle this. And here's my first question to you. This is, uh, um, Black needs to, obviously, if, if Black doesn't do anything right now, then uh, White will just attack and then save the group in the center and white is going to be happy. So black needs to somehow split white and, uh, and, and uh, somehow try and attack those white stones. So what should, uh, let's try to make a, can we make a poll right now? Let's, uh, yeah, so which move do you think black should play right now? A, B, or C? The vote begins, and I, I have time to drink some tea. Yay! Voting! Hey, Buzzsaw. OK. We've got five votes, six votes. Yeah, I, I thought of uh, making a lot of uh, options, but I thought that maybe the first time we try this vote, uh, of not making it overly complicated. So I, I only left, I limited the amount of uh, the amount of uh, variations to three, only three options here. <laughs> so it's not. I don't think it's very difficult to figure. So let's let's just see. All right. So what's the uh, what's the result right now? Close. The final result is, oh, one more. So B is, uh, oh, B. Everyone says B, and uh, Tang Jie just voted for B as well. And indeed, <laughs> no surprise here, B is the best move. Uh, I just put C here just to, just to confuse you guys, because, uh, you know, C is a typical, typical bad shape. We've talked about this, and we've had this in uh, in Gooplet's game, actually. This, this is the kind of shape that I made in the game, and I felt so awkward about that, 
is uh, white will just extend and later white can, has a possible invasion. So this is a shape you should all avoid at all costs. This is uh, something you will never see in a professional game. And of course, Akaboshi could, could never play this. And uh, A is this kind of classic, um, you know, Japanese textbook move. But again, doesn't really do much. Yes, it separates, but white has total freedom of choice now at the bottom side. White, has ten white can tenaki and leave the stone and consider this a good exchange, this h3 for uh, the black stone, and then just save the group. This will be fine. And uh, yeah, in the game, black played like this. Attach, and uh, this is like a leaning attack where we're attaching to the white stone, but we're not attack. We're not. We don't care about that stone. We don't care about attacking it right now. We, we only care about those other white stones in the center on the left. So white plays Hane, of course, and uh, wait. Oh, black plays this first, a peak, as an exchange. Of course, uh, white doesn't want to connect here. This this connection would be uh, an ugly shape. White jumps. This peep is like it's gonna just stand there, and this is left for later. Black will move that stone later, but and now another choice, another choice. Uh, black has a choice of playing A, B, or C. What do you think? How do we, how do we make ourselves strong and thick, so that we could uh, we could get some like thickness and power to attack white? One more vote. By the way, Soviet Blobfish, why is it a, why is your name Soviet Blobfish? What does it even mean? Is there such a thing as a Soviet Blobfish? Or am I not am I missing the reference? I feel like as as as, as someone who was born in a Soviet Union, I I should know that. <laughs> but I don't. It's a KGB spy. It's a KGB spy who can speak English. He's actually Russian too. All right. I didn't see the letters well. C as well. Oh, C. Okay. Oh, you voted for something else, right? You voted for A. I know C. Okay, okay. All right. So we, we have a, lo a lot of C options here. Uh, so I think C wins, right? Let's close the poll. Yeah, C wins with an overwhelming like 66, probably even more percent. But uh, yeah, C is the kind of move that you see in this sort of case, when you when you have this sort of attachment, you like you attach, extend, attach, extend. And this is the normal scenario we should all follow. But this is a bit of an exceptional case. Because black is not trying to just um, do the normal Joseki here. Black is trying to play something special to make white thicker, but make himself thicker as well. And uh, there is a special like strategy that you can all use in... Um, you can do that in, in a regular uh, Tsukenobi, like attach... Well, I'll, I'll show you later after, after the game. But you can do that in, in Joseki as well, and you can do that in this shape here. So, of course... Again, A is only here to confuse you. A, uh, someone, someone vo uh, voted for A, but yeah, A will just, you know, white will uh, atar immediately, and then white will probably even like, well, white can just do this and sacrifice one of the stones, and somehow white gets all of the stones linked. This would be nice. White gets the outside and some thickness. It's not really thick, but at least it's n nothing's dying. And uh, yeah, this would be a nice shape. But unless, um, you know, for example, we do this, black blocks, and now white doesn't have to add any moves here. White doesn't have to play on the, on, on the bottom here, which means that white can actually uh, add a stone somewhere. I don't know, white could do, for example, something like this, or white could do something like this. So white could add some stones here to the shape to make shape and escape. And so white would get kind of the bottom and make shape in the center as well. So white gets kind of both. To avoid that, in the game, Akaboshi played here. 
And this is a kind of uh, uh, making yourself and your opponent thick strategy. And uh, typically, like it doesn't matter what white plays right now, black is going to get thicker. The, the, the very standard uh, response to this is this diagonal move. But again, black, black responds. And this black stone J3 is kind of like a splinter now. It's just, it's, you have to handle this, this stone somehow. For example, if, if white just does this, black could extend, and then what? If white just kills it, then uh, this is sente, and this is sente, and then uh, after this, it's black's turn. Black got thicker, stronger. Now black can uh, switch to attacking the center group. So black could do something like, I don't know, something like this, for example, and start an attack. If white connects, then this and uh, attack. So yeah, we give up, we give up some territory. We make white thicker, stronger, whatever, but we make ourselves stronger in sente. That's the whole idea for black. So in the game, uh, white played here, <laughs> taking more points. And the problem here is this: black atar is like this, and this seems to be what a ladder. What is this? Well, the ladder actually doesn't work. Right now, white can escape, but there's a catch. Because if white now tries to, white in the game, white didn't escape. In the game, white plays here. And this is the best move, uh, according to Katago. But let's see why white doesn't escape. If white escapes, well, the ladder doesn't work. But black can actually play here. And this is Sente. Otherwise, well, if you now capture, if, if white does, uh, I don't know, this, Black will cut, and this is too much of a loss. Black now gets all of the right side with those three stones, and as long as, uh, as, long as, the, as, long as the black stones are not going to die, and they won't, then uh, this, is, this is a very, very nice uh, variation for black. So, and if, if we respond, if um, white extends, Black does this, white connects. Now the ladder it doesn't work for white anymore. Now the ladder comes to the, these black stones, and the white the white stones will die. So that's kind of awkward. That's why in the game, of course, Joa doesn't do this. Joa takes a corner, and here he ignores the connection and takes connects here bumps, tries to connect to the white group, and this again, this is the best move. Black says, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you, and I'm going to just attack something. This, and here, according to Katago, white should probably just, just you know, forget about his uh, uh, greed and forget about his uh, uh, amb ambitions and just take that stone. This, taking the stone will mean that the entire white group on the left is not going to be attackable anymore. It's safe. And yes, black can get this move, and probably, I don't think white is going to be alive here, but at least white has Sente, and white could think of uh, somehow using, using the Aji of these stones in the future and still continue this game. But in the game, white saves them. Black connects. Now, this is a, um, a, a nice shape looking move. And here, white tries to make shape, but of course, this, this stone is not to be captured. Black saves the stone, saves the stone, connects. And uh, this is a very interesting looking shape. Again, clearly not the kind of shape that you would expect from Katago to be the best. And Katago does criticize this move. This is like mm, a bit off, but again, it's a very solid, thick looking move, which is, even though it's not probably the best, but it's, uh, there's a reason behind it. For example, the move that uh, Katago suggests is the standard shape of jumping here, and this is kind of sente. White will do this, black extends, very nice shape for black, black is out, white does this, but now white is all safely outside, you see? White is all like out, safe, no Aji, 
so potentially black cannot expect to attack this white group anymore. So both are happy, but black loses every possibility of attacking this group in the future. And this is what Akaboshi was probably worried about. He didn't want to, to do this to just uh, help white like this. In a sense, black is helping himself, but black is also helping white to, to make shape. And this move that Akaboshi played in the game, this one, it doesn't help white at all. It just makes some shape. Black is now solidly alive on the left. Black is solid at the bottom. Black is strong everywhere. And now you will see what this will uh, result in. This game looks so chaotic. Well, I hope it doesn't because I'm, I'm trying to explain what's happening here. But yeah, it's, uh, it's just that uh, black is trying to make himself thick everywhere. And now the black is thick uh, on the right, in the, in the bottom right corner. Black is sort of thick at the bottom. Black is thick on the left. And now there is potential for black to attack everything that, a, a, any stones that white can have in the vicinity. White, black can now attack the, the, this uh, bottom left group. And also the white corner, the, the upper left corner of white doesn't look very healthy yet. So black can expect to attack that in the future as well. So let's see. Um, this exchange and now wait is it now oh this this and another poll one more vote it is now white's turn white's turn what do you think is a shape move for white in chess, we call the player um, Um No reverse gear Nizhmedinev. Wonder if that would apply to Joa. Well, I, actually, I, I mean, I know Nizhmedinev, but I didn't know that he, he was called Deadless nickname of uh, no reverse gear. Probably, I, I haven't been into chess for for a while, so I, I haven't heard a lot from the chess world. But yeah, Joa is. Uh, well, you know, Go is not like chess because uh, a lot of times players like Tal, for example, uh, they would uh, just go all in and they would just uh, sacrifice a bishop somewhere and just try to attack after this. And if the attack doesn't work, well, that's it. But uh, Go is a, a lot more, it requires a lot more calculation. So even if you sacrifice something, there's still a long way to play after that. So uh, Joe is still probably... Um, uh, like a, a more cagey, a more sneaky version of Nezhmedinov. <laughs> okay, everyone voted. A lot of votes. Okay, Marskal just uh, sneaked in his, uh, his vote at the last second. And uh, what do we have here? Oh, we have 50-50. We have A and B. Being, okay, one more vote for B <laughs> right after we close it. But okay, uh, one more vote for B. Perfectly balanced as everything should be. Mmm, isn't that just sweet? Yeah, so uh, actually, again, I made it up. And, uh, um, the, um, and this is a very, I think, a very good thing to remember because this is not the kind of shape that you would expect to play automatically. And this is definitely not in my like automatic gear uh, database. Here. And whenever I, I would see this in the game, I would also, my, my first instinct here was to play A. And that's why I put it here to confuse you guys. Because yeah, it, it seems so natural to play this move. And yet, this is a bit heavy. Because black can later push here and then this and then, you know. Uh, so this is terrible. So probably black white would have to sacrifice and do this. But still, uh, there are lots of ways. There are lots of ways for, for black to like play something like this. Lots of ways for, for black to harass white in the future with this shape. So it's a little heavy. And that's why uh, this game, hey, someone followed. Welcome, welcome. So that's why this A shape is, um, it will be nice in a regular scenario, but not when you're trying to make sabaki. Not when you're trying to make a, a flexible, living, escape-like shape. So uh, C is just something random I came up with. It's just entirely random. It just, uh, I, I picked it here because it's, it's close to, um, I, I, I could have picked like 10 Gan or something. 
uh, or, or, or this, and they're all like equally. It, it, it's not even close to the shape, so it doesn't do anything. Um, Black can still Atari here. And uh, the shape that uh, we should all remember and the shape that the computer seems to recommend in this sort of situation is this one, yeah, B. Uh, and uh, yeah, this, this, the idea behind it is that it's, it, even if Black Atari is here, which seems totally normal, then white makes the bamboo joint here, take, and you're still fine. White still has a good shape, no cut, everything's fine, and uh, you know, it, you're, there's always an escape route here, always an escape route for white. So white is all connected, all fine, and uh, not getting under any attack here. So that's the sort of shape that uh, is probably uh, the, the flexible shape for sabaki in this sort of in this sort of situation but uh, believe it or not uh, this is the the poll that we did it's uh, none of those options were actually played in the game for some reason uh, which is unknown to me in the game uh, Joa played this which is actually gote and I don't understand how he could have done this I mean maybe he's trying to uh, well there's a lot of uh, a lot of followers hey 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 Welcome everyone. So this, the problem with this move is that uh, black blocks, of course. White does this. Atari. White has no shape. White has no eyes. And it's black's turn. Black doesn't need to respond in the corner, so black will play in the center. White could have played in the center and made shape, but now it's white, black's turn and black gets to attack first. And this is exactly where black plays right now, except uh, Black could have played something like this, of course. Black could have atari but Black picked an equally nice uh, attacking shape here. This. Just trying to get closer to white. Now, that's the move. White connects. And that's the point, you see? Black is so thick. Black is so thick everywhere. Like, uh, group A is thick for white, for black, group B is thick, group C is not yet very strong, but white has no time to even think about invading there on the top, because right now the, the, the whole problem is here, right here in the center. And when black has strength everywhere, black can allow himself to finally be very bold and stop being so modest and, you know, play so defensively and then just make solid shapes everywhere. Now this is time to go berserk black goes berserk and just black just does this oh wait black does this attachment white hanes and cut and yeah this is the best moves according to Katago. and now what is white gonna do there's almost like no escape out of this black is strong so atari atari white tries to make shape atari Black connects, and Atari. It seems like there's a lot of cuts, but you know, Black is so strong that none of those cuts actually work. And now this, Black probably doesn't have to do this. Black could just block from the outside like this, and uh, this will be fine. But Black goes for some extra defense because this move is actually, it's not even attacking. This is a cut. And when white does this, it kind of forces black to do this. And now black is, black's shape is fixed. And when white does this, black ignores and takes. And now the whole problem here is that uh, this white group, as you can see, this A group, this huge blob of a group is uh, the Soviet blob of a group, is now locked in. It's all sealed in, it's all surrounded, and white needs to figure out a way how to live here. Can white live here? Well, in the game, white played a very nice move, which is uh, Katago thinks that this is the only chance that white has, and I didn't put any variations here, I didn't put any options, so I'm just asking you, what would you, what, where is that shape move which would uh, create some hope for white? White is still losing this game badly, because uh, white actually never, got any chance according to Katago because uh, with two stones black started with uh, uh, like a 20 point lead with 
and, and black never lost that lead. So it's still pretty much the same lead, maybe even bigger. Maybe C2 was about getting two codes with F1. Okay, B11. Even if white does live, that's a beautiful wall. Yeah, exactly. Even if white manages to live, make two eyes there, black is still, I think black is gonna be okay with getting that wall in the center. That's already good enough. Black is not gonna be crying over, you know, over white making two eyes on the left. Surely B11. Wait, B11, B11. Wait, how do I how do I make a move? All right, actually, I can I can place your suggestions on on the board first. So B11 is the dome here. Okay. How did you develop such good English? Well, I just kept developing it. <laughs> no, I'm just, uh, uh, I just love languages and uh, that's part of my job. I'm a linguist. So I, um, I just love learning languages. I mean, Go is just one of those things, but uh, la languages actually come first. <laughs> that's why like uh, one of the first incentives for me of moving to a different country is like the ability to learn a new language. Like right now we are living in Georgia and uh, I am learning Georgian. And I'll tell you about that some other day, maybe when we have a, a stream more dedicated to like Georgia and uh, Georgian stuff, I will tell you about the language a little bit because it's a very unique and uh, it's, a, it's a language which is like, it doesn't fit into any category. It's just a, it probably belongs to a category uh, all of its own. <laughs> Go is a language. Yeah, Go is a, as, as they say uh, in Chinese, they say Shoutan, like, uh, or in Japanese, they call this Shudan, like uh, the hand talk. A conversation with hands. Yeah, true. The language of stones. Yeah, and someone asked me, uh, the, la the previous stream, someone asked me about like how to say a flow of stones. And I never found that. I, I, I was sure that there was a Japanese term for like the f uh, flow of stones on the board. And I, I, I was sure that I, I, I had seen this somewhere, but I couldn't find it. If someone knows the term, the Japanese term for like the flow of stones, this kind of the flow, the natural flow of stones uh, in the game, then I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to know that. Oh yeah, Georgian is a language isolate, isolate, not part of Indo-European. Yeah, it's not. It's not. No, it's not. So any suggestions except for? Um... Oh wait, why is? Oh, because A. I put A here, so B. Hangma in Korean. Oh, there's Hangma. Uh, Hangma in Korean. Yeah, but uh, F one. Okay. Brazil plays Go. I mean, uh, I don't, I don't understand your LOL actually. Brazil plays Go because F one is actually the, the the one move that is the only move, the only hope for for white. Let me let me tell you about it. Like, do you, do you guys see the point of this move? This F one. I think someone mentioned before, right? Someone uh, was it the Soviet blobfish? Savi Blob mentioned the uh, yeah yeah yeah. Vadim, I don't understand the question. Can you repeat, please? Um, well, the question was about which move for white, uh, which move should white play to hope to save something, and this is this move here at F one. Uh, and the point of this move is, uh, it was actually me. No, I thought it was, it was someone else, right? Someone mentioned it. Yeah. Oh, it was you. It was you. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a very nice move to make a code. Exactly. So if the point is that uh, even if, if black connects here, white gets a code. And uh, if white wins the code, then uh, white lives, right? And if... If black connects here, then white can push this, this, and this is a co. So this is like the double-sided co, and uh, there's no there's no way for for black to avoid this. And so that's why black didn't even try to. Black doesn't care about this, right? Black doesn't care about winning or you know killing that group. Who cares about that group? 
yeah, so Blood just, just escapes here and says, okay, forget about that. You want to live in the corner? Go, go, live there. I don't care. I'm just going to destroy everything. And uh, this, this, and again, ignore, Black extends, and at this point, Joa resigned because it's just, it's becoming just so, so terribly bad here. Look, this upper left corner, it's not even like, it's not even 100% safe because uh, later, if let's say white does anything here, black can jump in and this corner doesn't feel that it's like 100% safe there. White can probably live with two points, but that's not a happy kind of living. Also, white is not still alive here. So let's say, let's imagine now that after this move, Joa does not resign. Let's say Joa just continues to fight. And uh, let's say he starts the, this ko, which is a pretty big ko, right? If, if white manages to kill uh, these stones, then white gets, not only does white live, but white gets the entire corner with all of those black stones inside. Pretty good, you would think. But then the problem here is that black has some very nice ko threats. So for example, um, black could play, let's say, um, black could play this one as a cold threat. And then this. And let's say, oh yeah, let's let's find some cold threats for white. White maybe has something like this. Right? This is a cold threat. And this is also a cold threat. White needs to capture. Uh, this. And white gets something like that as well. And we capture, and let's just say that at some point, at some point, um, I don't know, black does something here, for example, and white just captures. But the, the problem here is that later, after this Atari, there is even Aji with these two stones. These two stones, uh, which seem to be like left for dead, but black can actually do something with them. And black, black can, even though they're dead, but black has this move, which is really cool. And after white captures, this move. And now all of the white stones on the right seem cut off. So it's just, you know, this is a hopeless fight. Even if white manages to, to kill that corner, it doesn't matter. Because black has just so many places where he can attack because of this tremendous thickness. And that's the real problem. And that's why Joe resigned, feeling that there's no, there's no hope. There's no hope because there's so many, just so, too much trouble, too many problems to solve makes a picnic co. I don't understand why black didn't start with e4 before tenuking. Uh, e4, wait, e4. Uh, e4, oh, you mean, well, probably because, I don't know, maybe because black didn't care. Because it doesn't matter to him. Uh, is it gonna be like those five stones or this? Maybe this was a possible exchange because, uh, right, where was that? It was here, right? Oh, before, before that, before that, before here, Black could have done this, right? And yeah, this would, this would have forced White to, to live small. Probably, probably this, this would have been better. Yeah, maybe, but again, uh, this kind of leaves some weaknesses at the bottom and in the game having forgotten about this bottom side black Strengthened the, the upper side as well. So black became strong everywhere and that is what I like about this game is how Marvelously with only two stones of handicap a young Akaboshi managed to Just just make such a thick game that he left Honimbo Joa absolutely no chance at all. No fighting nothing and it's, it's just not even very difficult when, when, when you're so strong. The, the things that you played uh, at, the, at the last stage of the game, they're not, they're, they're not so crazy complicated. It's, it's not like you're watching a, a Shinjin So or a Koji game where everything just goes bananas from the, from the very beginning. But this is like, yeah, you could definitely read that. Tell us about Go Magic. Yay! Go Magic. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I should probably yeah, talk a little bit about Go Magic here. Now time for Go Magic. Wait.
Yeah, before I show you the, 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 the second game, which we, do we have time for the second game? I think we do. Well, the second game is going to be very short, so don't worry. And uh, so th this was like a longer sort of game. And the second game, um, I'll tell you about that in a second. But first, yeah, Go Magic. So once again, we are doing, uh, we're doing a lot of streaming these days because um, they, they tell us that there's something like if you stream enough times in, in a month, you, you can get like more perks. <laughs> you, you can get nicer, like nicer votes, nicer, like lots of uh, some, some bonuses here. So we want to get that. So we're streaming more. And plus there's just, we're not making any courses at the moment. So Go Magic is a, is a website with uh, interactive video courses. And uh, we have, let me show you just, just in case if uh, anyone here doesn't know, because we have this very nice uh, trilogy. Wait, let me show you. Kablam. So this um, is our, um, these, these are all of our courses. And as you see, there's a lot of faces of me which means that a lot of these courses are actually mm, taught by me. Ouch. Uh, but um, we have this, wait, beginner's guide here. And this is actually, if you're like, if you're new to the website and you don't know what to start with, because, and, and then in the future, this is gonna be even more important because when you come to the website and you have like 25 different courses and you don't know which one do you begin with, well, this is a good place to start. You, you, you come here and this is our, uh, we have three courses that we consider like our basic trilogy. Hey, someone followed, welcome. And so the, this, the first one, uh, the Go Rules Express course is the one that teaches you the rules of the game on nine by nine. It's very simple, very, very quick. Just uh, the rules and nothing else. No more talk. Then the second one, it just takes you right from there and teaches you the basics of the game, just the basic techniques and just uh, what to do at the very beginning and how to finish the game. Uh, and once you once you finish this one, and this one's actually free, and you can get a, a, a coupon and uh, get that course for free. Uh, and the last one is like a huge course that takes you all the way from like beginner 13 by 13, I don't know what's happening here on this board, to, oh my goodness, now I can play a game on 19 by 19. So this last course is, is pretty extensive. It's got a lot of details, it's got a lot of lessons, like 15 lessons in it. And I think it covers pretty much everything to, everything you need to know to comfortably play a game on a, on a 19 by 19. And if you, we think that if once you've watched all of these three courses and once you've solved all of those problems between the lessons and and if, if you watch all of that carefully, and if you've played some games in between, because you, you have to not just watch the lessons, but you have to keep playing. This is a game, right? Once you've done all that, you will probably become like 10Q. Um, because there's just, there's no way you, you're not making it to 10Q if you, if you do all of those things. And yeah, so these are the courses, and these are the links to them. But of course, we have a lot more stuff than just that. Those are the, just the three basic ones. But we have a couple of more advanced courses for, from Alexander Dinerstein. And these are, by the way, good even for, I think, someone who is like six done, seven done on Fox, like me. These courses, like especially the one on attachments, gee, that, that, that's a lot of detail. And that's a, that's a lot of things that I never thought of. And uh, a course on endgame, a course on typical mistakes, a course on, uh, um, a course on uh, the opening. And my personal favorite is actually this one, which like m more than half of this course is actually free. It's a course, The Magic of Go. It's a course on mysterious and unusual and bizarre things that happen in the game of Go. Something that you would never see in a game, but something that is still kind of exists in the world of Go and in the, on, on this board. So this is, uh, if, if you haven't seen this one, uh, the first like seven lessons I think are free. So just go check them out. They're really cool. Uh, now, and of course, we also have, uh, this is not just the courses. We, all, we also have the skill tree, which you can solve. There's lots of different problems here. More than a thousand problems in the first skill tree and more skill trees are coming. And uh, we have some articles. We have uh, stuff that's coming next. We have, we're working on a Joseki da uh, database. So lots of cool things. Now, let's get back to uh, let's get back to business. We have one more. Oh no 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 not this one. 
So we have one more. Yeah, it's getting late here. It's getting late in Georgia. It's like uh, it's past 11 p.m. here. But we don't care because um, for all of you uh, from like U.S. and Canada, it's probably somewhere in the afternoon or something. If you're in Europe, I think it's just the right time. It's uh, probably evening. Um, so let's get to uh, once I've told you about Go Magic. <laughs> Once I've told you about us and what we do, let's see one more game from... Uh, there's a game that I mentioned in the course, but I never show it. And I want to show it to you now because we are, because we're, we're watching live. Uh, unless, of course, a a everyone just ran away. Mike, how are we doing? All right, so um, before... So this blood vomiting game, it was played in 1835, uh, which was like eight years after the game I just showed you. And before, one year before that, like exactly one year, in the summer of uh, 1834, Akaboshi, who was already like seven down, I think at that point, and Joa, who was already Meijin, played a couple of games. And because Meijin could do pretty much anything, Absorber, hey, welcome. Because Meijin could do anything, he left all of both of these games unfinished. And that means that kind of we could guess that Meijin was probably losing those games. And he wasn't happy about them, so he just said, Well, you played well, Akaboshi. Well, let's just uh, finish this here and uh, let's, go, uh, let's go drink some sake. Or something like this, I don't know. But uh, those games are left unfinished, and I show the first one in the course, but I say that, oh, well, the second game was even shorter, and I leave it out. Well, I'm going to show it to you right now. It was actually very, very short. It was only 70 moves, or something like this, and after only 70 moves, uh, Mei Jin decided to not continue the game. So, wait, let me find it first, and then I'm going to show it to you. Joe really fumbled the, the ball to be, to be down that bad at 70 moves. Well, I mean, actually, according to our AI today, he wasn't really doing that badly. Because uh, we know that uh, Black's White didn't have Komi, so, and of course, Akaboshi played Black. So Black was kind of starting with a bit of an advantage. Uh, and then... Uh, Joa managed to bring that advantage down a little bit, but somehow uh, he just felt that it wasn't good enough. And uh, Katago doesn't seem to agree with a lot of moves that Akaboshi played, but I just think, I don't know, it's, it's, I, it's, it's just us mere humans, but I just, I, I, when I look at those moves, I just, I can't help but be amazed at how wonderful they all seem to me. Personally, maybe from Katago's point of view, it could have been done better. But I think, well, check it out. So, uh, obviously, Akaboshi is playing black, and uh, Joa Meijin is playing white. Because uh, once you become Meijin, you, you, you just basically you can't play a game with uh, with black anymore. Since you're a Majin, you're the only nine down in the country, and you you pretty much either give everyone handicap or you just take white in every game. So uh Majin takes five four. It's the aggressive stance. Okay. Simple Joseki. Kaboshi takes the corner. Finish the Joseki here. Akeboshi doesn't care about that corner. The corner is not going to die, so just leave it unplayed. The Kosumi. Computer likes that, obviously. Very good move, according to Katago. Surely. <laughs> Can't be bad, an extension. Okay. Pincer. And uh, again, this is something that I find difficult to play and uh, computers don't seem to like this very much but again Akaboshi is not doing this to keep the corner he's doing this to make white a little heavier and then attack so once white responds 
and splits black, black jumps. And uh, he's keeping the pressure up and he's uh, trying to, you know, uh, he's, he's hoping that white's going to run. And if white runs, then he can always, you know, just get the points like this and keep, keep white separated and uh, hope to attack in the future. So white plays here, split. Now this, obviously Katago doesn't see much of this move. Actually, Katago prefers uh, this. As you, as you might have guessed, uh, those computers, they really like attachments. And you know, Katago thinks that this is a good time to attach here and get some points on the right since we're not in danger anymore. This is a more um, abstract sort of move that uh, Akaboshi played, which allows White to just take more points points. This exchange, white saves the stone, black makes some shape, black escapes, escapes, escapes. This all seems fine, but Katago still thinks that this is all going pretty much, very much in, in white's favor. White is doing good here, and uh, white is not like uh, losing anything at the, at, at the moment. It's not worse for white than it was at the very start of the game. Because even though white is separated, white gets this wonderful honey. So white honeys and the two black stones are in danger. Of course this, double honey. And I forgot the review once again. <clears throat> all right, all right, let's review this. I'm sorry. Let's do ta -dun, ta -dun, ta -dun, ta -dun. Okay. We're back. So double Hane. And here's the problem. So if, if, if black now takes it, white will capture the two stones, right? This. This will be very nice for white. White takes the two stones and now white is... N now what about these five stones in this... In the, in the, they're just floating there. Now these five stones, they don't serve any purpose. It's just like those stones are just absolutely lost. They're wasted. They, they have no meaning. Black has a, a living group at the bottom, but that's that's meaningless. So this is not really a choice. Black has to do this. Black connects. White extends. And this is a fight, a capturing race. This. White takes the critical point and attacks. And this move actually kills. White kills the group. No problem. But uh, Black is not trying to live here. The whole point that Akaboshi... Uh, Akaboshi tries to make here is that white, black is ready to sacrifice those stones in exchange for some outside thickness sort of moves. Black is trying to make himself stronger on the outside, just like in the previous game. So, another miraculous looking move from, from Akaboshi. And this is again something that uh, the computer thinks is completely unnecessary. Uh, Katago just says, oh, right, just play here and just, you want it, you want the outside, just play, take the outside. Well, what are you doing playing in that corner? But I think that this move, it doesn't create any, you know, it doesn't give any chance for white to make a mistake. But that move in the game, it's a lot more tricky because white has to be very careful how to respond to this. Like, for example, if in the game, white does this at heart, which is fine. But if, let's say that white just connects like this. Seems like, seems very reasonable, right? White connects, all fine. Black is dying, or is he? Because now black would push. Now this is impossible because now black connects and black is alive. And now what? Everybody, no, white is in trouble because white now has the two stones here, and then and then there's a cut here. So if, if white tries to well escape here, for example, then there's a cut. Cut. What, what's going to happen here? Then white's probably going to die. So let's say, wait, let's say. White does this, fine, we extend, and then there's this, which means that, uh, well, this is a golden chicken standing on one leg. This is the double shortage of liberties, double damage Amari for, for, for black. Black can't approach. And uh, this, like white kills, but now black would cut and cut. See how unpleasant this is? Very, very unpleasant, shape-wise. 
black is just cutting everything and white has to be careful and just white gets the territory sure but uh, white gets just pressed down and black will get all the sentes so in the game atari and black gets this so this is a, like a uh, white captures and this is another chance for black in the future not right now but in the future black gets to black black could also play this and uh, just capture those two stones of course right now it's way too small but but later that's a good little bonus now this finally the, the turn white captures and this is sente as well white captures and now finally we do this and you see, yeah, we gave white all of the points. And still white is not really happy here. And yeah, the computer still still believes that it's, uh, this is mm, okay for white. White is doing well and uh, the white is not losing the game here. Not at all. But it kind of feels a little depressing in this position. Now, w these white stones are kind of isolated. They run. And these are some sente exchanges. And this is, again, very nice and thick shape. White needs to answer on the left. White responds. And again, another shape move. And it takes the shape away from white. It doesn't allow white to make any uh, sabaki. No light shapes, no flexible shapes. White plays this. And the next move is, is the one that like shocked me. After the next move, Joa left the game <laughs> unfinished. And this is the, the move that I would never even think of. What is this? And then Katago believes that this move is actually the best one. Well, there are a lot of moves here which are possible for black uh, shape-wise. But there's this one move which I'm not even putting this into a vote. Because like, this, what is this? This is the shape that I've probably never seen before. And yet, this is the best move. And somehow, this 24-year-old Akabo Shintetsu just played there. And this is the move. Can you try to find? Sure. Go ahead. Knock yourselves out. Find it. Oh, Mike, you, you wanted to try and find as well? Sure. Take a guess. You've seen it? Ah, you were too... Yeah, I, sh I should have... Yeah, in the finished game position. Yeah, I should have... Uh, next time I show you games, I will, I will be better prepared and I will like put it to the starting position before I let you see anything. It's just me being an inexperienced streamer sorry about that but yeah uh, i'm hoping that not everyone is as uh, uh, as as attentive as a savvy blobfish so if if you haven't seen the final move you're welcome to uh to try didn't see either good 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 mike can i have some more tea oh you, you want you want to take a guess you take a guess first and then <laughs> no guess Not honey? Ha 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 ha. You make me laugh. You simple human. You, you're actually thinking that like, Akabushi just played a regular Hane, and I'm saying, oh, this is a move that I would never imagine. A Hane. <laughs> maybe A, B, C, D? Uh, well, maybe. Okay. Uh, just give me a second here, and uh, Mike will make a poll. We'll make another vote. All right, all right. Just, uh, just give me a, a few seconds here. Oh, I'll put the, I'll put the, uh, I'll put the numbers now. I'll put the letters for you to find. Okay, let's let's go with. Uh, okay, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna put more numbers here. So uh, I'm gonna put. Wait. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Let's go this one. And this one. And this one. Can we do f five? Yeah, we can do as many as we want. Okay. Ten again, ten again. Okay. Let's do this. And maybe let's do this. Let's make it five. I want to make it more difficult because uh, since you're asking for it. 
Ha ha ha. Five instead of three. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. There's something undeniably good about uh, like knowing the, the, the correct answer and, and, and letting everyone guess. So what do you guys think? Take a vote. B, says Anton. OK. OK. B. Yeah, if you saw it, if you saw it in the finished game position, then you probably don't have to vote. If you know the answer, but if you don't, sure. Give it a shot. Thanks. Okay, D D B D D D B D. Two Bs and two Ds. All right. Any more? So far, we're down at 50-50. That's an even split. OK. All right, let me back to the game. And Akaboshi played here. Yeah, Akaboshi played B. This is the move, and this is, this is the kind of shape that I, I've never seen. And I mean, I don't re really understand how it works, <laughs> really. Uh, I don't understand, I mean, it's not that I don't understand how it works. I don't understand why this specific shape is better than any other shape. Like, why not something else? Why not the Hane, for example, that Anton suggested? But it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just surprised that this is the, exactly the move that 200 years after Katago thinks to be the best and, Kata, and Akaboshi actually played it in the game in 1834. Think about it. But uh, even still, even after this, uh, after only how many? 73 moves, um, Joe and Mei-Jin felt that, uh, yeah, White doesn't have much hope in this game. Because Black is uh, building a very big Moyo on the right, and uh, this White group is very much under attack. White has to run, and uh, Black, again, doesn't have any, any trouble in this game. Uh, and Black can just uh, keep on building the Moyo and keep on attacking. He had to go, <laughs> he had a phone with Katago in his pocket, yeah. Uh, it's the direction white wants to go in. It squeezes the white dragon and it makes invasions and reductions on the, the right side more difficult. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he's building the Moyo, but he's kind of uh, uh, pushing white at the same time. It's just that I think that uh, th there could be other moves as well. Like, for example, this move, um, I mean, it kind of does the same thing. But it, maybe it is pushing white, but it's, it's uh, doing a worse job at building the Moyo. And that's probably the reason why uh, the computer prefers the other one. I wouldn't want to keep playing if, if I was white. It looks grim. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and this is only this, the beginning of the game. And the, I'm, I, I don't know why, actually, because uh, I've, seen, I've seen Joa to be in much worse situations where he would be split and I would think, Oh, this is a game that I would resign right now, but then Joe would find a way out and just uh, magically save everything. So I don't know what the reason is for him not wanting to finish this game. Uh, maybe just because he was Majin, he didn't want to risk anything, especially his reputation. But uh, I mean, I would love to know the circumstances and the details of this of these games, like how 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 it ha how exactly it happened, so that when they played a game, and then how he just stopped it. Did he just say, okay, okay, nice, young Akaboshi, you're doing good. I think you, you're playing better and better every year. Now, let's, uh, let's end this here. Should we make a review? Well, I don't know. How, 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 how did they fi finish it like this? Yeah, maybe he wanted to play good football. The problem was he was mage in here. But his mage in and losing was really uh, looked down upon, I guess. Yeah, exactly, exactly, sure. Uh, so I think... Once he, I saw the list of his games, and once he became Majin, and once he got that 
ability of uh, leaving games unfinished. There were like half of his games, or maybe not half, but 40, 35% of his games were left unfinished. So once he got that, once he acquired that ability, he just, he kept using it. And understandably so, because uh, no Majin ever wants to lose a title. And uh, as the losing games is a sure way of losing your title, then, uh, you know, trying to stay away from any risk, reputational risk, was, uh, was a way to go, definitely. And uh, uh, probably more on that, uh, I, like, I prepared more on that in the course, and I don't, I, I don't remember exactly all, all the details that I said back then when, when I was filming the course, but yeah, um, m more on that, more on those uh, Majin sort of uh, trickery and relationships are coming. He became lazy. <laughs> Um, well, he was getting older as well. Like, uh, in, in our days, like these days, when we say Meijin, we actually mean someone who got the title of Meijin. And uh, for many years in Japan, this was Iyama Yuda, who has been the strongest player in Japan. And he's got, I think at some point, he held all seven major Japanese titles, including the title of Meijin. Kind of cowardly, yeah. All right, let me, let me get back to... Uh... So, yeah, it's... Um, but today when we say, when we say uh, that Yamayuda, for example, has a, has a title of Meijin, well, Yamayuda is still reasonably... When he had the title, once he won the title, he was still reasonably young, I think. And we're, not, we're never talking about uh, Yamayuda getting the title when he's like 45 or something. And... Uh, I, I think somehow the level of uh, the age, like the, the level of Go is just getting younger. And I think back in the day when, uh, like before I started playing, maybe somewhere in the 1960s in the times of Go Seigen and maybe after that, when we had players like uh, Kato Masao and Sakata Eyo, in those times, or Fujisawa Shuko actually, who, who still won titles when he was like in his 50s or even 60s. So those times, this was like this was normal that uh, a strong player in Japan could still win titles when he was in his fifties or sixties. That's, that's that's crazy to think about it now because these days when you are like thirty, basically a player usually starts thinking about changing his career and slowly kind of moving it toward uh, writing books and coaching and uh, opening a school or something like that, or just leaving go altogether and doing something else, like uh, Lisa Dell did. Lisa Dell finished his career. How old was he? He wasn't even 40, I think, right? He was like 30, 35-ish, 6-ish, 7-ish something, uh, I think, when he, when, he, when he stopped playing. And that's uh, pretty much the norm these days. You, you become strong when you're 20, 25, and then you finish. And you finish playing. Did, uh, uh, wait, Uwe Duck? More losses than the other Majin? You mean Joa? Oh, this is always 38 now. Okay, well, but he, he stopped playing when he was uh, 37, I think. Was it, was it last year or the year before? So yeah, he stopped playing Joa. <laughs> Did Joa duck more losses than the other Majin? Or was his abuse of the ability in keeping with Shusaku and pals? Uh, well, well, I mean, he had a pretty good relationship with Shusaku. I, I don't think how many... I, I don't remember how many games everyone else ducked <laughs> as Majins, but I think they did. They, they A fair amount. Whenever they could. But I think Joa was... Because um, there was this notorious thing with Joa and not wanting to let go of the title and, uh, and, 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 and his rivalry with the Genon and about all of that complicated relationship between them so uh for him not losing the title was kind of like a a, a a life commitment so to speak so i think with uh, some other majins uh some other earlier majins who were like just neutral about it uh they didn't care about losing that much i think they uh left <laughs> fewer games unfinished but um with joa That was that. That probably uh, artificially enhances the old mages' reputations because we can't see their losses. 
well, yes. And this is exactly what they thought at the time. This is exactly what Gannon and Seki thought. He, sa he said, uh, well, we can't even show that uh, Mei Jin is weak, even if he's weak. Well, Joe wasn't weak, but it, even if he becomes weaker and there's a younger player who could beat him and become Mei Jin, well, how, he, how can he show that? How can he prove to everyone that he's stronger if there is no way to challenge Joa or challenge the Mei Jin to a match? So that, that was, um, uh, the rules were, yeah, a bit messed up at the time. Of course, these days, it's just, uh, everything is a lot more transparent. But at that time, mm, yeah. And uh, Joa was in a very good relationship with Chusaku. Uh, he was, uh, well, he wasn't his, wait, Joa was the, Shusaku was in the same school, so uh, Joa was, uh, they, they actually played uh, a couple of games. Uh, Shusaku was very young, and uh, Joa was already almost like retiring, but I've seen at least one of their games. I've seen a game that they played with two stones handicap. Joa gave, Joa being like 50, I think, gave young 17-year-old maybe Shusaku two stones. And of course, the game was unfinished. <laughs> But, uh, well, Shusaku just crushed him with, with two stones, obviously. And uh, Shusaku actually, uh, Joe had three children, and one of them was the daughter named uh, Hane or something, uh, I think. And uh, Shusaku married her. So Shusaku was married to Joe's daughter. That's the kind of relationship they had. So, uh, yeah, we've, uh, well, we've been online for a while now we've been streaming for it's it's getting close to three hours now is it Jeez. okay so that's probably enough for today we've uh, we've done we've played two games and we've done two game reviews so we might get back to joa one last time maybe uh once we release the course and i, I might want to talk about it once again but then there's going to be one more historical course after this and we'll get to the player from that course as well and if you guys like the sort of uh, historical game reviews uh, done with the AI and uh, with my, like my, it's my own impressions slash AI impressions all mixed together in this weird sort of mixture. If you guys like that sort of thing, then um, sure, leave us a comment about that. Um, if you have any other suggestions on what you would like to see on Go Magic live streams, then please let us know as well. If you'd like any to see anything else in the in the magic roulette, which we never even spin, which we, if you'd like to see anything in it, then uh, you could definitely leave that in comments as well. Because we want to, uh, we have the T upgrade, which never happened. Yeah, and uh, we have lots of stuff in there. Uh, not, not quite enough. So we probably could put a few more options in the, in the roulette as well. But uh, yeah, any suggestions are welcome. I think Anton has a lot of ideas for the for the magic roulette, but uh, don't let him don't let him put all those suggestions in there because otherwise the, the roulette just gets endless with like thirty five different options here on the screen, like all the cure. <laughs> Vadim just uh, gets blindfolded. Vadim just uh, sings a song. Vadim just uh, turns around like a, like a like a doll or something. <laughs> Vadim like uh, does some. Um, sit-ups or push-ups or pull-ups or whatever, <laughs> something crazy. So, um, oh wait, hide the roulette. So, uh, oh, this is the only Shusaku Joe game that I have in my collection. It's the one you mentioned. Okay, so I guess the, the, they only played one game. I think, yeah, it, it was, uh, and it's just not, not just a regular game. Because uh, Joe was already retired and Shusaku was young and very strong, so there was no, like, there was no way for them to just come and play a game. It wasn't like these days. It was just like, hey, do you want to come for tea? Let's play a game, shall we? Let's play a couple of games. I'll say let's play a few games. But at that time, it was a lot more complicated than that. So uh, I think there was some, some sort of festival. And uh, one of the Japanese players at their school, at the Honibo school, was getting promoted. And so they were, they, they were celebrating. And as part of that celebratory activities, they Shusaku and Joa played this game and we are so lucky that uh, we're so lucky that they did otherwise we would never have a single game between these two wonderful players and actually we could maybe review that game in, in the next uh, in the next English language stream uh, we'll see about that I'll pick something I'll pick something 
this is brutal murder. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, th those games are incredibly fun to watch. Because, you know, if you pick a game that's like 279 moves and it all ends in like white winning by two and a half points, those games are, you know, you know and they're not for the live stream. So we'll get to that next time. Uh, there's going to be a live stream on Saturday, but I'm not sure which language it's going to be in. Uh, we'll make an announcement somewhere on Facebook and VK everywhere. Uh, we haven't decided yet. It's going to be English or Russian. Probably English and Russian next time. So stay tuned and uh, we'll let you guys know. So see you guys next time.